This rocket's about to strike, hitting people and buildings alike. But that's when Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system springs into action. A missile is almost instantaneously fired off to intercept the incoming rocket. It heads towards it, and as soon as it draws near, it explodes, eliminating the threat. Iron Dome is a truly one-of-a-kind missile defense system that has effectively shielded Israel from approximately 90% of the rockets that have been fired at it in recent years, as well as in recent days, from the Gaza Strip and other areas like southern Lebanon. In this video, we'll look at how it works from a technical standpoint. We won't touch on the geopolitical and historical situation, though. I'll say it again. This isn't a political video, but a technical one. Just because we're talking about the Iron Dome missile defense system doesn't mean Israel itself isn't bombing the Gaza Strip. Just to be clear. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. The name Iron Dome, a dome made of iron, evokes the image of a sort of imaginary hemisphere in the sky, representing the reach of Israel's missile defense system, or, in other words, the range of action of the Israeli missiles that intercept and neutralize enemy threats. Let's explore in detail how Iron Dome works. The system consists of approximately 10 defense systems, which are strategically positioned throughout Israel, and they're also mobile, so they can be relocated around the country as the situation demands. Each system, referred to as a battery in military terminology, is composed of three main components. A radar system, a control and data processing center, and three or four missile launch units, each of which can contain 20 missiles and can be reloaded. When a rocket is launched from enemy territory, Iron Dome's radar detects it at a distance of between 3 and 72 kilometers and calculates its launch trajectory. If the rocket does not pose a threat, the data processing and control center lets it crash to the ground, thus saving on missiles since each one costs around $50,000. Otherwise, a missile is launched and in some cases even two of them just to make sure the target is taken down. At this point, the missile doesn't directly hit the enemy rocket. Instead, it gets close enough to its target and then explodes. The blast and the mass of fast-moving metal fragments it produces are what destroy the enemy rocket. Obviously, the missile's trajectory must be absolutely accurate. For example, if the missile is perpendicular to the enemy rocket, the explosion probably won't take it out. Instead, if it comes up alongside it, the missile usually manages to destroy the target. This whole process takes just a few seconds, and that's why Iron Dome struggles more to intercept rockets that target places close to their launch sites. In fact, the system can take down a target within 15 seconds of its launch. If a rocket's flight is shorter than that, the missile defense system can't step in. As a result, the areas of Israel that are very close to, or bordering on, the Gaza Strip or southern Lebanon are more exposed to potential risks. A final note from a technical standpoint, the system also works at night and in all weather conditions as well. Now, we've seen how Iron Dome works, but when did they decide to go ahead and build it? The development of the Iron Dome system commenced in December 2007, and it's been an extremely expensive project, considering that for its construction and maintenance, billions of dollars have been spent and are still being spent. The project was made possible thanks to co-funding from the United States, and it took about four years to complete since, by March 2011, it was already fully operational. Incredibly, less than a month after its inauguration, on April 7, 2011, it was used for the first time to intercept a missile from the Gaza Strip. Since then, it's been used to intercept thousands of rockets with an estimated success rate of 80 to 90 percent, as we said earlier. But at this point, some of you might be wondering, what is the difference between the missiles utilized by the Iron Dome and the rockets that are fired from the Gaza Strip or Hezbollah territory? Let's start with the Tamir missile, Israel's Iron Dome interceptor. It's 3 meters long, has a 16 centimeter diameter, and weighs 90 kilograms. At its tip, there's what's called a proximity fuse, a device that makes the missile automatically explode when it's a certain distance from its target. It's also got small fins, 
they're actually stabilizing fins, which along with the optical sensors, allow it to change its flight path. Like I said, the Iron Dome system can detect attacks when they're as far as 70 kilometers away, approximately. To non-experts in the field, it might still seem like quite a long distance, but considering that by definition a short-range missile is a missile that can travel up to 1,000 kilometers, we're actually talking about very short distances here. The reason is that the enemy rockets that it has to shoot down are rudimentary weapons. In particular, they're mostly those fired by Hamas, the political and military group operating out of the Gaza Strip in Palestine. In the organization's arsenal, there are various kinds of weapons. For instance, the Qassam rockets are pretty well known. They're rather rudimentary, handcrafted rockets that, depending on the model, have a range of a few kilometers, or slightly further, up to a few dozen kilometers. Anyway, they've got relatively low explosive potential and aren't at all accurate. Other Arab-Palestinian organizations, along with the Lebanese group Hezbollah, utilize different kinds of rockets. In closing, just to come full circle, the Iron Dome system, which, as we've seen, protects the Jewish state from very short-range rockets, is not Israel's only defense system. It also has other defense systems against medium and long-range missiles, like the American Patriot missile defense system. Guys, I hope you like this more technical episode. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, right here on Geopop Everyday Science. Ciao!